What did you want to accomplish when you first started the self-advocacy movement? To have an organization that people could be a part of and they could feel comfortable and like that they were at home and to help people gain confidence in themselves and to become better advocates. Why did you get into the self-advocacy movement? <laughs> um, there's a lot of <laughs> Um, I think the, uh, my biggest reason is that I used to participate in um, Special Olympics and um, so they had a commercial on about Special Olympics and they used the R word and so it made me really angry and I kicked the TV. Well, you know, that's not going to do anything. And so now I know how to direct my feelings in a positive way and to get the results that I want. Okay. What was your passion in the beginning? Um... To show that people with disabilities could have their own organization and that we were ca capable of doing a lot of things that people didn't think we could do. How did you organize in the beginning? Well, I used to be... Um, the president for um, staff person for People First in Nebraska, where I'm originally from. And um, so I don't drive, so t I had to figure out a way to get to the chapters. And what I used to do is I would, I went and asked the newspaper company, it was called the World Herald if I could um, ride along with them. to, And so I had to deliver the newspapers, but I got to the different chapters that way. Okay. How would you compare the self-advocacy movement to other movements? Um... I think that the self-advocacy movement is like the civil rights movement or the gay rights movement because each of those movements had an issue that they were fighting for. And I think that you have to have um, it has to be your own self, you know. It can't be somebody else leading the organization. It has to be, like for a, the gay movement, it would have to be somebody who's gay. For um, the disability movement, it has to be somebody who has a disability. Or you're not going to have the passion there. How did you keep the movement going and people excited about being a part of it? Oh, wow. Um, I think the way that you keep the movement going and people excited about it is that you have to have partnership with other people like with um, SABE for example because it's national 
you had to do a lot of talking on the phone in order to keep up with each other. So you have to have that commitment to it. Um, I also think that it grows by word of mouth. Uh, so your passion about it, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So how did you get people to organize to fight for the same issue? Because what's the what what's been interesting about this is in um we've had several international conferences or people come from different countries to our national conference and what's cool about it okay like with england for example they had um, um prime prime minister thatcher and we had bush at the time so we have the same issues just different characters of those issues and so that was cool to see you know that we were fighting about the same thing what would you like to see self-advocacy look like in the future what I think would be very cool is if we were able to have a world where um, all the people that work in the disability field would be able to put themselves out of work and because we wouldn't have that. We wouldn't have a need for it. Everybody would get along with everybody else and see people for who they are. Is there anything else you would like to tell us? Well, the one other thing that I'd like to say is that I think one of the things that was important for me to learn how to advocate for myself is to have the encouragement that I've had and have people believe in me. Now for our People First organization in Oklahoma, we've been given charge of um, RDD Awareness Day because we developed training and have shown people what we're capable of doing. So they believe in us now.